This video is for Python Chapter 3, Selected String Methods, for the course, An Introduction to STEM Programming. I'm Dr. James Renault at Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this presentation. In this video, we will cover many of the methods used to manipulate strings, including upper and lower, strip, L strip, and R strip, count, find, and replace, and R just, L just, and Z fill to justify. Remember, methods follow an object with a period and may return values or modify the original object, and we'll see a lot more of that in future slides. The first two string methods we're going to talk about are the upper and lower string methods. They do exactly what you would think based upon their names. Upper converts a string to all uppercase letters, and lower converts a string to all lowercase letters. Let's see a program where, where that actually happens. In this program, we can see that I'm asked to enter a string, and the number is saved in the variable, or the whatever I type is saved in the variable a. The variable u is assigned to a.upper, uh, the uppercase string. The variable l is assigned to a.lower, the lowercase string. And then I print the uppercase string and the lowercase string. And you can see the results ahead that I typed in happy mixed case in a mixed case, and you can see that it's displayed in all upper and it's displayed in all lower. The next group of methods I'd like to discuss are the strip methods, strip, L strip, and R strip. And what they do by default is they strip white space, blanks, tabs, new lines, or any other, well, usually just those three white spaces, but they strip those white spaces off of the ends of a string. Strip strips the white space off of both ends of a string. L strip strips the white space off of the left end of a string. And R strip returns the string with the white space on the right end removed. Now you can optionally list include a string containing characters to strip if you want to strip something besides the default white space. But most of the time you'll be using strip, L strip, and R strip just to strip white space from a string. We can see here in the program that I have a string called the string that I've saved in the variable x called st stuff with spaces at the front and spaces at the end. L would be the L stripped string, R would be the R stripped string, and B would be the uh, strip string where it's stripped from both. And you can see that by default star concatenated to the variable x concatenated to a star shows the white space on both ends. L, where I've stripped the left end, and R, where I've stripped the right end are the next two lines. And the last line is where I've used strip to strip the white space from both ends of the string. The next string method is called count, and it does just what you think it would do. It counts the number of, of times a substring is found in a larger string. It returns zero if the string does not exist, the substring does not exist. You can see the way I wrote it here on this slide. It says haystack.count, open parenthesis, needle. You can think that this is searching for a needle in a haystack and returns the number of times that substring exists in a larger string. In our little sample program, with a string of, of randomish letters, you can see that A occurs three times. The substring ABCD occurs two times, and the letter Z occurs zero times in that string above. The next method is called the find method. And what it returns is, it returns the location of a substring within a big string. So haystack find needle will return the position within the haystack of where the needle substring exists. It will return a negative one if the substring does not exist in the larger string. Also remember that in Python, all of the positions are based on zero. So the first letter, if it found the needle as the first letter or it's a first substring, it would return a zero saying that start at the first. So Python strings and Python's lists that we'll see in subsequent chapters are zero index. So position zero represents the start of the string. 
You can optionally also specify positions in the find for finding the second or subsequent occurrence of a string, but I didn't include that in this slide. You can look it up in the documentation. Using the same string as in the previous slide, you can see that the letter A, B, the letters A, B, C, D start at character three, and if you count over, you can see that zero, one, two, three is where the first A, B, C, D occurs. And the letter Z starts where? Well, it starts at negative one because there isn't one to find, and negative one represents we couldn't find it. The replace method will replace one substring inside a bigger string with another substring. Now, it doesn't, re doesn't modify the original object. It actually passes a string out that you can then assign back to the original value if you want to actually do a replace and not keep both the original and the one with the replacement. Let's see this in the next slide. So you can see I used a song lyric from uh, an old John Cougar Mellencamp song, Little Pink Houses for You and Me. And then on line four, you can see I changed the color of the houses from pink to yellow. And you can see up above it says now little yellow houses for you and me. Also remember that you can, pr you can change or replace a substring with the empty string. So in the third version, it now says little houses for you and me because it replaced a pink space with nothing and removed that from the string. So this is a really good way to find and delete something or a substring from within a string if you don't need it there. The last methods I want to talk about are the LJust and RJust string which will pad a string out to a certain length by adding blanks to the, either the left end or the right end, L just or R just. Or the third method is Z fill, which will zero fill a string on the right. So if you have a number and you want to add zeros on the right end um, to zero fill it, you can use the Z fill method to, to kind of pad it out. These are often done when we have to exchange data or we want data to align nicely in rows and columns, nicely in columns specifically. So um, padding out data with spaces or padding out data or padding out string values with zeros. Here's an example of justifying. You can see I have a couple of variables, A with apples and B with bananas, and A price and B price being the subsequent prices of the two. Um, take a look at line nine where I take the word apples and L justify it to 10. I then put out the price. Of course, I have to convert it from a float to a string, and then I R justify it to seven. So it's a 17 character wide string that's output. And then you can see bananas. I use the same L just and R just to output bananas. And you can see they line up very nicely in, in uh, rows and columns when they're displayed. That concludes this video on some selected string methods. There are a whole lot more, but these are just some very common ones and, and we'll get you started. This presentation was copyright 2020 by me, James M. Renault, PhD. You can contact me at jrenault at shawnee.edu. Please remember, this work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License, and I would like to say thank you for watching.